What's up guys, welcome to the English Chancellor Nerd Size Geek, and yeah, we got a brand new David Fincher film, Mank, which is about the writer of Citizen Kane and takes place in the Hollywood during the 1930s and 40s, so it's very different from anything David Fincher has ever done, but is it good? Let's find out. Yeah, uh, this film is not for everyone. It's definitely not trying to appeal to everyone. If this premise doesn't sound interesting to you, or if you're not into classic movies, then it's not really going to be for you. Um, you really have to be really interested in that sort of thing to like it, and most likely be a Citizen Kane fan, and I'd recommend you watching Citizen Kane before watching Mank, because... I mean, you don't necessarily have to, but it will very much help your experience. So, kind of, that's when I talk about, like, how this movie connects to Citizen Kane. So, uh, my thoughts on Citizen Kane are, Citizen Kane is really great. I mean, it's Citizen Kane. So, how does Mank connect to Citizen Kane? Well, yeah, obviously, Mank is writing Citizen Kane in the movie, but it's not always at the forefront of the movie. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but this movie does actually have lots of parallels to Citizen Kane, um, like, in the way it's sort of told, and, like, the style and stuff is very similar to Citizen Kane. Like, there's this conversation my Mank is having with another guy about the Citizen Kane script, and he talks about how it might be too confusing with having the non-linear storytelling, and Mank says, you can't capture a man's entire life in two hours, all you can do is hope to leave the impression of one. And that's exactly what Mank is doing along with Citizen Kane. So it's a cool line for Citizen Kane. Also a cool line for the movie it's doing itself. So that's just a cool thing that they do there. And just all the way it's told is kind of like Citizen Kane. And it's told in like these two different main timelines. So one of them he is writing Citizen Kane. The other one he's not. So it's kind of like important like half the time. But yeah, I definitely recommend watching Citizen Kane before watching this movie. Now I want to get more into the technical sides of the movie, which I thought were all really, really great. It really has captured the feeling of watching an old movie really, really well. Not just from it being black and white, but the way they do the performances and even some of the techniques. It all feels like you're going back in time, which I think is really great. And all the different elements work really well together. The cinematography is great. The production design, editing, the costumes, all that stuff sort of comes together really, really well and really transports you back to this time. And then also the performances are really great here too. Gary Oldman just really, he's really great in this. I love Gary Oldman. And this one, you don't see Gary Oldman. You really, he really transports forms himself into the character of Mank, which I thought was really well, and feels sort of like an old school performance, but it still has some more modern stuff, because I think it does a good blend with all the things, as it still is modern, so they can use some of the modern stuff while still giving it the feel of it being old, and then all the other performances are great. Amanda Seyfried is great. I totally think she deserves um, a supporting actress nomination, which I think she probably will get. Um, and then all the other performances in here are really good. There's a bunch of characters that show up, like, in a couple different scenes and, like, throughout the movie. All are really well acted. So, acting across the board, really great. So, now I want to talk about, like, the story, the pacing, the dialogue, all that sort of stuff. And this part, I'm going to be a little bit more mixed on, but there's definitely parts I very much liked. So, the pacing, I mean, it's slow-paced, and I think it works really well in some parts, doesn't really work well in some parts, and I guess that goes to the story. The story has a lot of different things going on, especially because you have two timelines, and even within each timeline has some different sort of things, so there's definitely a lot of stuff here, and sometimes I feel like it can be almost too much going on, and there's a lot of characters in here, as I mentioned with the performances, and sometimes I feel like there's too many characters and too many storylines, just, just a little bit too many. I feel like they could have trimmed it down a little bit, and some I didn't find nearly as interesting as others, as I'm a big movie fan, so I love seeing them as they're actually doing this stuff, making the movies, you get to see them on set, and all that sort of thing. I find that really interesting. I love the stuff with them writing Citizen Kane, as I would love to write movies, and I love all the stuff on set and the old sort of thing and coming up with movie ideas. I found that all really interesting. 
The politics side I didn't nearly find as investing and during those scenes I found myself kind of getting more bored in those scenes and that's kind of throughout the movie. Um, there were some scenes that just really gripped me. The dialogue in those scenes were just really great for me. The performances, everything was working well together. And then there were other scenes where I just didn't really connect to it and I kind of just couldn't really focus on there and kind of got a little bored. So it's kind of hard to talk about all that stuff. And I think there's just, if they would have focused it a bit more on, I guess there's just so a lot in his life, but I feel like they could have focused it on something a bit more. I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more. But yeah, and it's just so, it's so niche that it's hard to fully get invested. Because although I... I mean, I've seen Citizen Kane, I've seen some other classic movies, but I'm not really, really into those. And it really doesn't make it easy for you to truly get invested to these characters, this sort of thing, without doing that. So I find that found that a little bit frustrating. So that kind of pulls it back for me a little bit overall. But within the story, there were still a bunch of moments I really did like, and there was a bunch of great dialogue, especially when you have Gary Oldman and Amanda say Fred's characters on screen that worked really well together. The dialogue was great in all their scenes. This movie is getting a lot of Oscar buzz and I think it definitely deserves nominations and to win a bunch of the technical categories. Definitely, definitely think it does, especially cinematography. And I think David Fincher deserves a best director nomination because his directorial style is really, really great in here. And for best picture, This year, I mean, I haven't seen most of the other movies that are going to be up for Best Picture this year because lots of them haven't really been released yet to everyone, so I can't really judge on it, but in this year where there's not as many great movies, I totally, yeah, 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 I'd get, I'd probably give it a Best Picture nomination, but like if it was last year, I wouldn't, but this year there's not quite as many like of that top tier movie, so I definitely understand why I'd get that. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was definitely really good. I loved it from the technical aspects, and I was really interested in it, intrigued by it, like, half of the time, maybe, maybe a little, probably a little bit more, but then there were big chunks of the movie that I just really couldn't get into. Um, so it's a tiny bit of a frustrating experience, but not too much, because overall, I still really did like it, so I'd probably give it, like, an 8 out of 10, um, and yeah, I definitely would maybe recommend you to check it out, I, I honestly don't know if I'd recommend it, if you're a David Fincher fan, just check it out, because you want to watch all his movies, and if you like old Hollywood, check it out, if not, you can probably skip it, so yeah, that is my review for Mank, comment down below what you thought about the movie, please like and subscribe, and keep watching me.